Hi everyone, welcome to the final part of our um, goblet um, video from Ivy and the Inky Butterfly using Black Widow's pencils. Now we have um, basically Ivy and House Mouse left and then we're going to do a little bit of something with the background. Um, let's come in and get started. Now I'm going to use my Black Widow skin tone pencils. Um, I have got the um, dark and light tones. I'm going to use the light tones um, for Ivy. Um, just having a look at what we have going on here. Um, I think I might start with, I usually start quite pale. So I'm going to start with the eggshell and do her very pale um, base for her skin. And then we'll see where we go from there. Um, now we, when we're doing skin tone, we have to think about the shadows and um, I sort of think about where, um, where the shadows sort of are with regards to under the chin to start with. I'm actually going to open the dark tone set. Oops, because I think I need a slightly darker. Hmm, I'm wondering, because I need some shadow under her chin. I would usually use this sort of grey. Let's try the grey thorn. I think it might be a little bit pale. This is from the dark skin tones. Oh, it's very blunt. Hang on. There we go. A little better. There we go. Making a mess. So the grey thorn, I'm going to put some under here her head just be shading and actually Johanna's drawn a few lines here of her shadow there. There would also be some shadow under her nose now her face is very small so it's a little bit difficult but I'm just going to try my hardest just put a little bit under her nose and a little bit cleft like in her chin there like that. Now often I'm not going to use the grey for the next bit. Um, we'll go a little bit darker. We'll use the murk and mark out a few other dark areas. She looks so sad. Um, so here is the murk. And I'm thinking along the edges of the neck, we a little bit darker than the centre. So I'm going to just fill those bits in a little bit. And then come down like along the edge of the dress, be a little bit darker. And then, you know, there'll be inside the ear here that she would have, there'll be a bit. Now, on the face, I usually do a bit just above the jawline there. And bring it up, and the same on this side. But we're thinking about, she's going to catch the light on the top of her cheekbone. Just going to bring that up. And then we're going to mark out like the edge of the nose, like that, and under the eye, but leave a pale bit on the cheekbone. And then along the hairline, there'll be a little bit of shadow. So we'll draw that in a bit. That's all quite faint. Now the chin as well, we have a little bit around the bottom. There'd be a little round bit that's a little bit lighter. So if you think, if you're not sure how to colour the um, face, it can be good to look at a photo of a face in exactly the same position as your colouring. And then you can have a look at how the light hits the face. And that was very helpful. Now she's still really, really pale. I'm gonna put some rust on her. <laughs> I'm gonna make her rusty. Well, she is in a goblet of water. It's gonna put a little bit of this again, darken those areas. All the areas that I've already marked is darker. I'm just gonna put this on in some parts. Now I feel that she looks quite orange as well. So I'm going to use a little bit of blush. Now the blush colour, I'm not going to use it for blusher. I tend to leave the cheeks pale. 
um, but I'm going to use it to make everything look a little bit more pink. So here it is, blush, and I'm just going to use it quite lightly. I'm going to try and go over everything really to darken it all up, but making sure that I'm sort of putting more down in those areas that I want to be darker, that I've already marked as darker. So we're going over all of it, but really layering up in those areas that need to be darker. And then she just starts to get a bit darker. I'm going to do it again. Just darkening up. Now her lips. I find if I put a bit of pink on top of lips on a really small character like this, it just looks wrong. There's not enough space. Um, I think it's better to leave it um, just as that black line rather than trying to do much more with it. So I am going to grab, I want this pretty pink. I want a little bit more pink and this is quite a much darker colour so you need to be really 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 gentle with it just putting down a layer it just will hopefully stop her looking quite so orange but I'm just putting a little layer everywhere but as I say really gently Now a hint that I had once, I think it was from a Helen Atherston book, they're very good, um, was that um, you can use either orange, is it orange, or red, and green, no green and purple on faces to change the colours a bit. I think if it's too orange use purple, I think that's right, I can't remember now. Her books are very good recommend them highly. She's got a new one coming out soon as well. I'm just trying to gently build up layers until it looks how I want it because I don't want her looking quite so orange. I think we've got there. It's still very pale. Now hair. I do um I'm not sure what colour hair Ivy is supposed to have, I don't know if she is. But I think as we've got this gold, we should do her brown hair. And I'm going to start with a light brown. I'm actually going to use the dark skin tones. We've got a really lovely set of browns. I'm going to use the olive brown just to start her off. It's too pale. Um, it won't stand out from the, um, from the goblet, but it just gives us a base colour. And then we can add some darker colours. I really probably should have sharpened this, but never mind. We're nearly done, it doesn't matter too much. Right, I'm going to go for a darker colour now. Whoops, this one is sharp. This is the mud. Okay, we're going to use it quite a lot at the bottom. I want to sort of fade it up a little bit as we go up, but once we get clear of the sort of goblet really, oops, and up we go. Now where her face is here, I think it would be darker, so I'm just going to put a sort of dark layer in there. We're really deep inside her hair there, so I think it would be a lot darker. And then on her parting, just do a little bit and take a bit up so we keep actually keep that paler colour on the top of her head where she's catching the light. I'm not sure if that's going to totally make sense but I'm going to leave it for now because obviously it's easier to add more layers and take them away. So we start to fade up here a bit. Again in here quite dark and as she sets off her face helps it to stand out a little bit as well because it's darker. Now Ivy's dress 
um, in my first version of Ivy, um, I coloured um, her dress is the same on every page, but in this book I'm not doing that. I'm keeping each picture as a standalone. I just wanted to do it in a different way. Now if you've been colouring Ivy in a particular way with particular colour hair, with particular colour dress, then obviously you will want to stick to that and that's absolutely fine. But um, I'm going to have a little think about what to do. Now I'm thinking because we've got all this purple and gold, I think maybe a pink might look quite nice. We've got two leaves on her dress. And I'm thinking maybe those leaves should be green. And I'm thinking a really emeraldy green. Um, what is our... We've got a really nice emeraldy type. We've got turquoise. Now I'm thinking of Venom. This is from the Cobra set. The Venom. And I'm just going to block them in. In the green. But I'm going to do the collar the same colour. Now I don't normally do the collar very colourful. I'm just going to put a light layer to start with. Um, I usually leave it white, but I'm thinking let's tone it, match it to the leaves. That'll be a little bit different. And I'm thinking it'll probably be a bit darker at the top there. Maybe there'll be more shadow towards the bottom as well, but where her hair would be shading it. Oh, the sun is gone in. I can't see what I'm doing. <sighs> there we go. That might do. I'll have a think. Now, I was going to do her dress pink, but a pink that goes with green. I'm wondering if the cyanide pink might work. More, or more of a salmon pink, maybe. I don't have that sort of colour. <sighs> Excuse me, yawning. Except for it would be too much like the skin tone, won't it? Um, let's go red. Let's do her a red dress, but not... Let's go for the um, where is it? ladybug or the watermelon. The watermelon I think I'm going to use, actually. This is from the um, spider set, watermelon. And I think it's a pinky red. I just realised we haven't done, we haven't probably finished her fingers. Can I do sort of medium pressure here? then it will look reasonably dark compared to her skin tone. I'm going to make it a bit darker along the edge of the goblet. In fact, I think we'll pop a bit of shadow on there. Okay, so I'm just going to grab the rust, give it, and do add some colour to the ends of her fingers. I think that would be where the shadow is. Yeah, I, you could do shadow in between each finger and things like that, but they're very small, it's going to be a little bit tricky. So I am just going to get the pretty pink and just run it over really, really gently, just so that her fingers are the same colour as her face, or nearish. And I don't think my fingers and face are identical colours. Depends if I'm blushing. <sighs> okay. So I'm just going to, I just want to put a bit of shadow in, so I'm going to use the um, Black Widow and uh, put in um, a bit of shadow along the edge of her dress, just because she's not, we want the goblet to be casting a bit of a shadow, because don't think she's pressed right up against it. I guess her hair's over the edge of it. And a bit of shadow under her collar. Just while we're drawing in shadow, there she is. Okay, now we haven't done any shadow under our hands. And I think we should perhaps just add in a little bit. You can be very gentle here. Because... Uh, it's pale compared to over there. Okay, 
Now, we have House Mouse. Now, I would be tempted normally to do House Mouse in brown, but because House Mouse, because we've got so much brown going on, we're going to do House Mouse in grey. So we're going to start with the spider web from the um, spider set, which is quite a light brownish grey. And I'm going to leave the inside of the ear. Now, this bit around House Mouse's neck is the um, loop of her apron. So uh, we'll need to note that when uh, in a bit. So I'm not doing tail or ears yet. So there's my basic light layer and then I'm going to go into my um, cobra set and grab my dim grey which is actually quite dark and start drawing on some fur little oops hold down the page little lines you probably can't see the individual lines and that's okay might do more there now, fur direction is um, an interesting thing. Um, if you've got a cat or a dog, you can have a look and see what direction the fur grows in. But generally, I'm thinking it grows down a limb, down towards a foot, or uh, towards a paw, or um, like down towards the nose, but or mouth, and down the body. As long as you stick to something consistent, I think it doesn't matter hugely. Now, we have a charcoal, a darker black. I'm going to sharpen it. You need to have sharp pencils if you want to show up your fur. So here is the charcoal. I'm going to start down at the bottom this time. You need to hold the page really still. Because if the page bounces up and down when you're trying to go up and down with your fur, it can make a right mess. Now I'm thinking... Sort of down from the ears, but then toward, up towards the eye maybe. And the nose. Sun's gone in. It's so changeable. I guess it's cloudy. Okay, I don't. You could add some black as well, or some. There's a flat black, a black, that sort of thing. I think I'm just going to leave it apart from the nose. I think. I don't know whether to. No. Don't think I will. Arguing with myself, just let me argue. <laughs> Rust. I'm going to use this for the ear and the tail. But I'm going to put it down quite hard, quite dark. I don't know if my tails are. Do you have fur on or not? But this one doesn't. But. I am going to grab the Midnight, which is a black, from the Dark Skin Tone set. <clears throat> and do a little bit of shading on the ear. I'm thinking around here it might be a little bit darker inside. So we're looking here, we're looking in the ear. So there'll be some shadows. Like that, and I'm thinking on the tail, might be a bit on the edges, just a bit here and there. I'm just doing a bit of fur and going to colour in her nose. There we go. Now I need to think about her apron colour. I think. A nice light pink might work. Lightish pink. Um, this is the pig's ear. Um, it's not really light, but fairly light. Um, 
the the um, black widows a lot of them are quite intense so you don't get a really pale colour oops I've gone out of the line but never mind now we need a sort of watercolour we do have something called Aquarius in the um, in the Cobra set which I think I'm going to use um, we have a drip here what I'm going to try and do once I've sharpened is make my drips I've got made a right mess on the page hold on is that's better to make my water droplets darker on the outside and lighter in the middle I put my Aquarius pencil down and it broke let's see if we can get it to work if we can't we use something else we may have to I haven't got a dowel sharpener in here which is what I use when things go wrong now can't get it to work right so Aquarius is not going to be used we're going to use the um, um hmm. let's use a blue let's use this one the blue uh, heaven blue heaven instead i do wonder if my sharpness full it is it's probably why it's breaking anyway we use the blue heaven so it'll be slightly different to what i planned but i'm still going to try and make it darker on the outside center. Quite difficult when it's such a small shape. But I'm leaving a little white dot because you could do a pen there, but it's easier because I've got to come in and do some other stuff I'll probably forget um I am just grabbing why am I grabbing this oh sorry bang um yes I'm grabbing my black widow because I want to do some fur pieces coming into house mouse's ear like longer bits um, that looks horrible Hmm. I'm going to erase that. Sorry, people. I'm just going to erase her ear back. Entirely, in fact. And now grab the blush and just go in there with that. Just blend it up. That's better. Oh, I was thinking. I'm sorry if you um, if yours isn't very nice. Right, my fault. Our background. Now, what I'm going to use for the background is a stencil. This is a brick wall. Okay. Oops. Let's move those pencils out of the way. Um, come out a tad more. There we go. So I I will see if I can. This is bought from a shop. Um, claritystamp.com I was gifted this actually but I'm sure you can probably find a brick wall stencil sorry for all the noise I'm sure you can find a brick stencil um, online somewhere I will see if I can find any I'll put them on in the description um, so our Amazon ones it's always easier to do a link to Amazon and I'm going to use these soft pastels these are my mungios saw some of these in a stationery shop this morning actually in my town but they it was a small size I think it was just a half size set that was interesting I'm going to use grey so I'm going to whip it around um, now I've not tried this before at all so it's going to be an experiment what I'm going to try and do is do some bricks but not all um, I'm going to God, my cloths are quite dirty so I'm using these reusable washable makeup cloths um, I'm going to find a clean bit um, here to put some grey on and I'm going to use quite um, yeah I'm going to use quite a darkish grey so it looks like that it's almost black and I'm going to put this here and what I'm basically going to do is find a section in the middle that I want to be quite dark and then I'm going to just fade it out 
so we don't. And this is what I saw someone do that done. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing down here. So make this centre bit really dark and then just fade it around. Oh, it's not dark enough. Fade it around there. Like that. And I think we'll do, might do a bit here as well. Now, I can't remember who you were that did this and you showed me, you posted it on my Facebook page and it was such a good idea, so thank you. And do reply in the comments and tell me it was you, because you are amazing. And I'm going to do a bit, maybe right up to the top here. Then I'm going to get a brush, where's my brush here, and just brush off because the excess pastel. Ooh. Maybe it needs a bit in the middle as well. Um, yeah, I think it does. I don't want to spoil it though, but I'm going to put a little bit here. But this time, that one goes right to the edge, so I'll make this one not go right to the edge. It'll be a sort of smallish bit here, but not right to the edge, like that. And then maybe a little bit here. Let's just make it straight. So I'm basically putting, choosing a bit where I want the most, and then sort of doing less around it. Quite straightforward. Look, they join up. Hmm. I'm going to make that do. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to spoil it. So thank you, as I said, to the person who did that because that is a brilliant idea. I'm really happy with that. So there is Ivy and House Mouse in their gold goblet. So yes, it's been quite a long series, um, three, but they've been quite long videos, I think. But um, I've enjoyed it, and thank you to everyone who's joined me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it too. Um, yeah, hope you have a super day, um, and happy colouring.